<laughs> hey there guys we're up and running we're up and running we um it is friday here and we've got a special edition zoom conference thing here with brandon shelton from over in tennessee um so he's gonna be kind of showing us his what he does, um, doing his hat bills and his hat patches, and just kind of tell us about his journey into leather crafting a little bit. So we hope you guys enjoy it today. Yeah, and Brandon does a really nice job too. I've seen some of it. It's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, Brandon, what's your what's your Instagram so that people can look you up if they haven't? Uh, I believe it's Shelton's Custom Tooling. With an underscore, I remember that now. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, with an underscore. <laughs> underscore. I don't know. It's hard to keep up with all those different ones. So your big thing is TikTok, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's where I've blown up the most would be um, TikTok. That's nice. I, I try to avoid that because it's really just a big time sink. I tell you what, you start watching those videos and it's hard to stop. So yeah. <laughs> every yeah, especially especially now that I follow all the other leather workers and stuff on there, it's really easy just to stop and and watch what they're doing. And everybody yeah. goes live on there now. Yeah, well, I guess. Most social is like that. You kind of just get started scrolling somehow, and then suddenly an hour's gone by, and you're like, well, there was my evening. <laughs> exactly. Oh, me. So what are we doing today, Brandon? I am going to show how I get the hat room shapes come out with something like that. Um, awesome. Unfortunately, you would think, like, I've got a bunch of people that's like, why don't you just make, like, a clicker press die and just click them out? That'd be so much easier, but unfortunately, I have found that they're not all the same shape. Those darn hat that's, manufacturers. Yeah. Which I guess anything mass-produced like that, it's not going to be the exact same. Tape. Basically, I just use tape to get my pattern. Should have found a better way to uh, get my camera set up so y'all can see a little better. Are you just going to tape around the whole perimeter there? Yeah, I tape around the perimeter here with just some thinner stuff. And then, uh -huh. um, on the outside, you'll let it overlap, and then I'll come in with a pen and kind of mark out the edge. So do people usually bring you a hat, or are you just buying hats from uh, some I apparel keep, company? I keep uh, Richardson 112 snapbacks in stock. Um, that's the only thing I keep in stock just for easeability on me. Um as far as it's more like a one size fits all type of thing for like the website hats. But as far as like a custom order, if you was to want like a uh, fitted hat or something, you could either send it in or I could find one or you could go that route with that for sure. That's, that's always kind of a tough thing when someone has a, a custom order like that on a, on a special product that they have and they say can you do this and you say well i'll need that so i can <laughs> yeah. so i can cut things to fit and they say well i can't get rid of it here let me give you some dimensions and that yeah. doesn't seem to work out very well most of the time for me yeah especially with these odd shapes so i don't i don't want to charge you however much it ends up being for your hat design and not fit your hat correctly right so so even with the hats that you just buy through one person, they're still that much different that you can't get a dye? They're still off that amount to where sometimes like back here in the, uh, the back towards the seam here, it'll be off a little ways. Or even on these corners, sometimes they're not the exact same. Oh, wow. It'll be off just enough to make it just look off. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Which it probably looks okay to some people, but not to you. <laughs> with me putting my name on it, I, it's got to be perfect. So, it's like half of these designs I've been drawing lately, everybody's like, "Man, that's pretty sick." And I'm like, "Oh, but did you see this?" 
could have definitely done better here. We're, we are always our own worst critic. That is for sure. That's a, you know, I guess that's, a, that's the great thing that I really appreciate about Kevin when he talks about like doing leather work and, and doing leather work for money. You know, his yeah. thing is it's really, it's just got to be, it's got to be good enough. We always think and we always know that we could do things better or differently. Um, but a lot of times the customer, they don't see those little things that kind of happen along the way. And he's really, you know, at some point you've got to, you've got to determine how much time you're putting into making it perfect versus like, I'm going to sell this for $25. So it's okay. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah. I'm still at the point where I'm so new that I'm trying to make a name for myself still. So I want everything I put out to be the best that I can put out. Sure. To an extent. Now, I mean, I'm not going to spend three days on a single hat because I'm doing it full time now. So I've got to be able to make a living, but <laughs> Yeah, that silly little TikTok app has, has been a blessing. Never thought in a million years I'd ever post a video, let alone start a business from posting videos on there. People have gotten really creative. Like, I'm actually, honestly, quite impressed with society making little TikTok videos. It's pretty incredible the things that people are coming up with anymore. Yeah. Even even off of TikTok, I think that was the best thing that came out of this whole coronavirus situation is people had to they had time to sit down and think, hey, what could I do to pass time or be different or whatever? Right. There was a fellow a minute ago that to, that wrote in and, and wanted to know if the if the crown in the bill makes a difference. Or I would say if it's flat or if it's got a, a, a curvature to it, does that make a difference? Uh, it'll obviously change just a little bit. The more it bends, the longer the the uh, piece of leather would need to be, I would say. Um, I kind of make it a, like an easy medium when I make it. That way you, can, you still have a little bit of flexibility and bend to it. Um, but I don't use a real heavy leather on this. I use a four to five ounce Herman Oak, so it's... It's fairly pliable. It's not stiff as a board or anything. You can still shape it to your liking. Okay, I'm still not quite understanding. What what are you doing as far as it? I I realize you're completely covering the bill of that hat with tape. But yep, I'm making my templates. So completely cover this with tape, and then I'll come in with a pen or a pencil. And I'll draw out my uh, design, like I'll come right up on the edge of this and then make my curve here. And then the way I've done those little pieces on the back, you don't really have to do anything with that. But after that, you'll take this off and you'll cut that out. And oh. that's your uh, one more time. Idea for the leather. Well, let me just turn it straight. <laughs> yeah, you made it smaller. Yeah. I lost him on my head. I'm still looking at him. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> He's lost. I have, I have it streaming over here on my phone to the sides. That way I could kind of see comments and stuff too as they come through. Oh, nice. So, Brandon, why can't you just flatten the, the bill of that? hat out on your on your table there 
on top of a piece of paper or whatever and draw around it. So I, you could do that. You could definitely do that. It would be kind of hard to get this this back line here. Um, but I don't see why you couldn't get the outside shape from that and then do some trimming up afterwards. Mm -hmm. I think it worked just fine. I feel like Denny and I are just going to sit over here brainstorming how we could come up with a clicker die that would be like pretty close and then you could just <laughs> trim what you need. Well, well that's what I was thinking. You oversized. just, yeah, just do one with a white, your, your tooling pattern with a wide border on it where you could yeah. trim off wherever as long as there's some border left, you know. Right. Yeah, that would definitely, that would definitely work. I think we're back up now. Okay. So where did you learn to uh, tool leather, Brandon? Um, basically just sitting here and not getting up until I learned it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still learning it now. Um, I watched, of course, I watched some of y'all's live videos and gone back and watched some of the older videos and stuff. Um, watched some of your videos, Denny. And, uh, of course, some of the Don Gonzalez videos, stuff like that, just on tips and tricks, because half these tools, uh, come to find out, I were not, I was not using them correctly. <laughs> well, there's a lot it, of ways it look, looks to me like whatever you did worked out well for you. I've seen some of it. It looks good. I kind of. So what, what made you decide bit. to try out leather work? Well, that was kind of one of those things that I would always look at when my wife would drag me into Hobby Lobby for four days. It felt like <laughs> <laughs> looking at like Christmas ornaments and stuff. So that's where I would end up being is over in like the leather working and wood burning and stuff like that area. And it was okay. always one of those things I kind of wanted to take a stab at. And um, I seen all these uh, the Hey Dude shoes and stuff like that blowing up. Mm -hmm. I, like, I kind of want a pair of those. Maybe I should just, you know, make my own instead of paying $300 for a pair of shoes. Well, that backfired. <laughs> <laughs> If, if you're not in it, it's probably going to cost a lot more than $300 to get started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, do you do a lot of those shoes now? I do. I've done I've done quite a few different pairs of them. Uh, right now, just the hats are what's blowing up right now. So that's kind of what everybody's wanted here lately. I'd like to do a pair of those, you know, every once in a while just to kind of change it up. <laughs> and it's the same process for getting the design on those as I am this hat. That's kind of where kind of how I got the idea of getting the hat shape from doing that. Gotcha. Um, we've had, we had somebody that just asked about clicker dies. So when, when we order clicker dies, um, we always use Texas custom dies. Um, you can look them up online. They've got a website. You could call us. We can give you their phone number. Um, but they've been making cutting dies for a long time and they're really great. So just Texas custom dies on that. There's a clicker. Do you have a clicker, Brandon? No, I do not. Well, I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything's still cut out by hand now. Yeah. Up until just a, probably two months ago, I was still stitching these on by hand. What kind of a machine do you have now? Uh, I started with one of those like Chinese shoe patchers. Uh -huh. kind of machine. I still have, I actually have two of those right now. Um, one of them, a guy off TikTok, seeing that mine was having issues one night on a live stream, and he actually sent me another one in the mail. Is really cool, but um, 
I have, I wanted the Cobra class four, but of course right now they're about impossible to get your hands on. So I ended up with a uh, Cowboy Outlaw machine. Gotcha. Just a, a cylinder arm type machine is what you're using. Yeah. Yes. Usually I would cut this straight out of the side of leather, but I figured for the video purposes, it'd probably be easier just to cut out a little piece of it. Shelton, do you also run a laser? Uh, I do not. I have a laser guy. Um, it's actually a guy I made pretty good friends with off of TikTok. Um, <laughs> nice. he, he made the uh, banner behind me, and he makes all my decals, and he makes all my uh, laser patches, like the one that's on the hat that I'm wearing now. And um, on a lot of my hats, I just put like a little patch on the front of it. He makes all those for me. Nice. Uh, leave his his graphic works LLC. He's usually in the comments. I can be <laughs> up somewhere when I click on the lives. <laughs> Was that you? Some guy no. Oh. Some guy said that you need to be using a head knife. And it says, come on, Denny. <laughs> but I've got this to say, you're doing a nice job with how you're doing, so I see no reason to change. Yeah. Every every process is different. So what you're doing right now, it seems to be working out well for you. I'm still at the point where I'm doing with what I've got. <laughs> I've started upgrading a few things, and, of course, the first thing I upgraded was... Bevelers. Got that big chunk of change pulled out of my pocket. I'm very keen. Nice. Yeah, it's um okay, especially when you start talking. Phenomenal. Now you're using painter's tape there, right? Yes, yes. This is just regular 3M painter's tape. When I uh, tape the back of a, a tooling project, I always use uh, packing tape. And I know if you use that on the finish side, it will oh, yeah, pretty much <laughs> make your leather worthless. Don't, after years. don't do that. <laughs> yeah, this is the, uh, it's not the very sticky kind. Um, it's kind of the cheaper kind. Mm -hmm. That's usually what I use because it's it's not as yeah. rough on that. Look at that. Now he's using his yeah. packing tape. There he goes. Yeah. <laughs> I started using packing tape because I was having issues with when I would go to take my blue tape off the back, I was just ripping it into little pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A lot of times packing tape does that to me too, but most of the time it's because I've cut a little too deep and maybe made a little cut on the on the tape, and then when you go to pull it off, it, that's where it tears right there. Gotcha. That's easy to do with this four to five ounce sometimes, especially with like a, a undercut or a lifter or something. Uh, Jeff Allen says, how close to the brim edge are you uh, are you cutting your pattern? Uh, so it's like directly on the edge. So I was gonna say when we watched you trace it out, you were basically yeah. tracing that edge line. So yeah, yeah. Does yeah. that try to make up a little bit of difference for like burnishing the edge and stuff too? Yeah. Because I will. But you're basically flush edge. right on the edge of that hat brim then. Exactly. that leather work uses so much tape <laughs> that's our cheapest material <laughs> yeah you know uh years ago like in the in the uh, al stolman days you know they would always use rubber cement and a piece of like poster board or something like that oh, and wow. actually cement it to the back of a project uh <laughs> 
And that, that was a real process. Brandon, your mom says hi. She is so proud. <laughs> hi, Mom. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> hey, Brandon, how did... Uh, sorry, I'm talking over you because I can't hear you, but... No, you're good. Your dad, how, what, what kind of part did he play within the thinking part of getting involved? Uh, so, dad took a early retirement. Oh, his sound cut out. Um, this, this, he took an early retirement this past, uh, it's probably been a year or two now. I don't know, that doesn't matter. But he took an early retirement and um, started doing his woodworking stuff that he does full time. Um, and at the time I was still farming and, uh, having some issues with them. We was, was having issues with the pregnancy at the time being, and I wasn't, wasn't able to be at work every day and yada, yada, yada. So I was like, you know what? Dad's doing good. I'm just going to go bombard him and be in his way every day for a little while until I can figure out what else I want to do or find another farm to work out or yada, yada, yada. But seeing seeing him just just drop what he was doing and do that full time and it it work and the drive that he put into it and it made it work i was like well you know maybe i can make this leather stuff work if i just do the same thing so uh that played a pretty good part in me um deciding to go full time and doing this full time awesome so what kind of stuff does he does he make um, his biggest thing, like my hats, would his biggest thing would be um, flags. Oh wow. wow! That's awesome. He does a bunch of those, and of course, you know, about anything else, he does a little bit of everything. He'll go from doing flags and artwork type stuff to putting in cabinets and. Uh, I helped him do like a sub foreign job one time. He's all over the place doing stuff. Um, he's actually been playing around with some malls here lately, trying to make some custom malls. Nice. That's a big thing nowadays. There's a lot of people making malls. Oh, wow. That's cool. I love that epoxy. And epoxy. He made a couple of those out of those like cheap Amazon $10 malls or whatever just to play around with and try to get the idea of what to do with them. He's got him some, some good plastic for the mall heads and stuff in now. I think he's got it about figured out. I have to maybe start selling them. Nice. We're going to get some of those. Hey. You just marked your border there? Yeah, I just gave myself a, a reference point for my um, pattern. Do you draw your pattern on the leather? Yes, I do. Started getting a little more comfortable with just drawing it on the leather. Just working in the circles. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Circles. Four to five ounces. I know for a while there, a guy I know was doing a lot of collars, uh, jean jacket collars. Oh. You know, like the old Levi jackets, he was doing collars for them. That's sort cool. of the same thing that you're doing on, only on a collar instead of a hat, Bill. Have you, have you had any call for those? I have not had any of those. I have seen a few of them on, on the TikTok and Instagram. Man, Denny, we got to bring back the, the denim jacket trend. Yeah. 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 We're, we're super on the denim trend. 
it should be. The, the 70s are here again. That's what it seems like. <laughs> Got the bell bottoms. I just got to bring back the denim. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, the, one the other day. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine with me. Uh, everybody wore their pants around their waist at that point in time, so that's cool. Yeah, right. <laughs> around their waist <laughs> instead of their knees. <laughs> uh, All right, Tori Ann wants to know if we have any recommendations for beveling stamps. Uh. We sell beveling stamps. It really, Tori, I mean, there's a there's a lot of bevelers out there, and it really depends on the look that you're looking for. And there's some, like, which, like, probably what's the what's the one that you use most, Denny? Uh, a beveler, probably. If it was one of our stamps that we sell, and, and they, they are good stamps, I think a PB-13. The PB-013? 013. 013, yes. Yeah. PB-012 and 013. Are the most the most common size. And that's a checkered. Use. Yes. That's a checkered stamp. Yeah, those yeah. are checkered steep bevelers. Yes. Yeah. But you know, if you're if you're new to tooling and, and you're just thinking about bevelers, there's probably seven or eight more tools that you need to think about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's parachators, uh, veiners, flower centers, mule's foot. You know, and those, we sell them, Andy sells them, all the custom tool makers sell them, you know. Uh, so it, it just depends on what you want. Uh, yeah. I'd say like, like Shelton knows, you can, I, I would start out first with just the cheap, you know, 5 to $7 stamps. Yeah. Figure out if you really want to do this because you start buying Barry Kings and you start spending 50 bucks on a stamp. You really want to make sure that it's what you want to do. Yeah, it adds up quick. Then are you going to do a hat? <laughs> Not today, but I will do a hat. I will do a hat. Brandon's got me excited here. I'm, I'm wanting to do one. Maybe we'll do it again. We'll flip it around. He'll watch you do one and give you critique. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll see what happens. I'll, I'll, I'll see how I do it. I watched you with your tape, and I kept saying, now, why is he doing that? And probably when I try to do it the way I'm thinking, I'll realize why you do what you do. <laughs> and uh, what kind of a pencil are you using, Brandon? Uh, this is the Fine Touch. This is a 6B. Their 8B is a little too hard for my liking. It yeah. doesn't leave marks to I've heard a number nine graphite pencil is what what to use, but I I can't draw a pattern on leather because I'm too heavy-handed. I make marks in the leather. Like I see, you're you're just barely touching the leather and getting a good mark out of it. But I would be sitting there trying to mark halfway through it. Just <laughs> trying to swivel knife yeah. the pencil. Trying to swivel knife it. Yeah. <laughs> and. Yeah, so you're you're erasing a little bit, and and if I tried to erase it, you know, I'd still have a mark there, an in, indentation in the leather. It's easy to no. do. But that doesn't matter, you know. I've seen I've seen lots of really world class uh, leather toolers, you know, draw on the leather, and then I've seen some other world class, you know, show winners that say I can't do it on leather I mm -hmm. do it on paper and then transfer yeah. it so so it, whatever Whichever you're way. comfortable doing you know it as long as it you get what you want in the end yeah. I the the good part about doing it on the leather is you save a whole step yeah you know? the bad part is I mess up a lot of leather <laughs> That's 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 really why he got his job here is so that he could just do leather work and not have to worry about that's the leather. Right, that's right. <laughs> they don't like it when I waste leather, but they don't say much to me. On the life hack. Yeah. <laughs> In that case, are y'all hiring? Because I waste a lot of leather too. <laughs> I mean, oh, no, I if, if you'd come up here, I bet we could find you a job. You might have to make wallet interiors, though. Yeah, just for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, unfortunately, Diddy is really the only one here that actually gets to do the exciting job of leather work. The rest of us answer phones and emails and pick orders and do social media posts. Yeah. So, or <laughs> click out shapes, I cut belt strips. Well, I remember when I first started back in R and D, it was you and Clayton, and and me. Uh -huh. That and Clayton got to do a lot of uh, creative stuff, and then things just took off. Yeah, you know, and, and we started doing so much, so many big projects for different companies, and he got lost in the shuffle as far as what he got to do. He got know. to answer emails. Yeah. Got to answer emails and just make prototype stuff for people. Yeah. So it, I was too, I wasn't tech savvy, so I didn't get caught up in all that. Not so tech savvy myself. Give away some pockets. So Jeff Allen had a blowout in his pocket of his jeans. We were talking about we were talking about pocket protectors for the back of your jeans. So we've got them. I think I think we sell them in a kit at this point, right? Maybe. Maybe. I don't even know if we sell them in a kit yet. I don't know if we got done. That was the. If you need one, give us a call. A give us a call, Jeff. We'll, we'll hook you up with one of these. I thought we had a set of templates for those. We got the dice. Yeah, we have okay. the dice. Yeah. We could probably give him a shot. We'll we'll cook you out some. Yeah. I know Jeff up in retail, he he would all the time come in with a, a leather pocket on his jeans because he'd he'd carry his scissors or whatever in the back pocket and pretty soon they'd wear it through, so Yeah. He'd just make a leather pocket. That's one of the reasons he bought a, a leather stitcher. <laughs> so he could fix his jeans. Becky Freeman wants to know if that eraser you're using is a regular pencil eraser. Um, I would guess so. It's just a color blue. I don't know. It came with the pencils. Okay. I usually, I usually use the one that comes with the pencils. I've, I've got it stuck in my head that that's the best one for the pencil. I'm using. Well, if they provided that, that seems to make sense to me too. Yeah. Anything's better than those real squishy, nasty ones that they come with most of the time. Uh, Brandon, we've got Devin is curious what the patch size is on your hat. Roughly three and a half by two and a quarter. Three and a half by two and a quarter. That's the perfect hat patch size. <laughs> what I was, if I was going to make one, that's exactly what I would have said. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, how much did it change your life when you got your sewing machine? Uh, quite a bit. Um, I actually have slight arthritis in my hands so the hand stitching was kind of awful to me yeah it's really even just i mean there's not a ton of area you know on those hat patches or well yeah. the hat patches but then also you know the the brims but depending on how many you need to do in a day um, it can really be a lot of time sink. And I know a lot of people, I thought it was so funny. I was helping, um, a gentleman with a sewing machine here a few months back and he was really worried about the height on the class 26. He's like, can I make it lower? He just really felt like it needed to be lower because he was so used to hand sewing for hours that he was just imagining sitting at this machine on a stool for hours. And he's like, I just, you know, I want to be sitting in a chair. And I was like, sir. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> I was like, you're going to you're going to go from, you know, it takes you an hour and a half to hand sew whatever it is that you're doing to being done in like 2 minutes. Yeah. 
So I was like, you really, you don't have to worry about the yeah. <laughs> sitting position anymore. You're going to be up and down and moving around and you're going to be making more things and you'll be yeah. back to the sewing machine. And um, That's anyway. right. You know, it, it, uh, it lets you do things that you wouldn't have been doing if you didn't have a sewing machine. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Could, because you used to say, oh man, I don't want to do that. I got to hand stitch that whole dadgum thing, you know? <laughs> Uh, I'm about to start my first purse. Nice. And I never would have thought about doing that if I had to hand stitch it all. Yeah. That would be. Yeah. Man, I watch some of these, the uh, like these really crazy fancy purse makers on Instagram that hand sew the whole thing, and I'm just like, you've got a hundred hours in hand sewing some of like these seams on these bags, and yeah. my goodness, they're beautiful, and they're probably ten grand, which is you know that's great, right. but. Your your clientele market is really only so large at that point. It's just like old Kerry Swartz. Yeah. You know, a premier, premier world class leather craftsman. And uh, he loves to hand stitch. He'll stand, hand stitch a whole horse head stall just because he loves to do it. And, and he does a nice job. <laughs> you know, so he'll sit there for three hours stitching on something. He can probably stitch one in three hours. That's, but he could have stitched it up in five minutes, <laughs> ten minutes, you know. <laughs> At the lo at the longest, yeah, you know, but there there's something to be said for it. I do, I do like I... a good saddle stitch, but yeah, I don't like doing it that much. Yeah. Okay. You're like I like money more. Yeah, yeah. saddle <laughs> stitch. <laughs> You know, you were you were asking him how much it changed your life. I remember. I'm going to date myself here. Okay. I remember when cordless drills first came in. You know, there used my wife would be asking me, "Can you put this shelf up, or can you build me this <laughs> and that?" And I thought, well, if I could nail it together, yeah, I'll do it. But I'm not going to sit there and drive a screw in with a screwdriver. <laughs> You know, but when I got a cordless drill, I said, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll make everything. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. How's it coming, Brandon? Coming. I got one side done. Nice. All right. Should have just thrown out. Do you have a, a a series of flowers that you do? You just you just hand drew that flower. You know, most people have a, a template or, or a pattern of some sort for their flowers. Unless like a customer wants a specific flower, it's just kind of what what comes out. Well, the ones that I've seen are really nice flowers. They're original looking flowers yeah. that you've done, and uh, you know, if I were you, I would keep with that <laughs> because they're really nice thank you it's funny some of the flowers i make i'm like i don't know if that really looks that good of a flower but well it depends on you know the now. the actual uh, perimeter of the flower doesn't have much to do with what they look like after you tool them right yeah it's all kind of how you come yeah. it yeah Been trying to find a uh, we tried to do like a TikTok leather worker challenge thing where we all told like a Dong and Ball's pattern or something just to solely just to see the, all the different ways that everyone would tool the same pattern. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, and there was a few people that participated, but not as much as I would like to. I would like to do maybe like an actual like competition but not really competition like nobody really wins but something you know bigger so i could actually get more people involved in it yeah just kind of a showcase of, of the way people do their different things yeah yeah I'm the I'm the world's worst plagiarist, you know. If I <laughs> if I see a flower or something that someone does like that flower that you did on that one hat bill that I'm thinking about, you know, you can bet I'm going to try and plagiarize you. <laughs> Just count on it. It probably won't come out the same. It'll, it'll be the same general shape. 
Man, going back to Kerry Schwartz, he was working on um, a Dr. Seuss saddle, yeah. and he had some. He just had some really fun flowers that he kind of took from the the Dr. Seuss books um, that he did on there, which was just it was really neat. That's that's a really good idea. Yeah, we're just over here kind of browsing through your Instagram, checking out those those malls that your dad's working on. Yeah, when are we going to get some of those? <laughs> <laughs> we need to get some Dior. you will put them in the store. Yeah, <laughs> we'd love That's, to. Yeah. He got the plastic and stuff now. For, Is the plastic the pretty hard? Yeah, um... I forget the abbreviation to that plastic, but it's the same as like what uh, the Barry King Mall head is made out of. Mm -hmm. Similar to that head. Nice. <laughs> okay, the first cordless drill came out in 1961. <laughs> if anyone was wondering. Thank you, <laughs> Razor Blade. Now <laughs> right. we've got our backs. Oh, nice. I like the little tooled wallet you did here last month, or at least you posted last month, with like the inside pockets that are tooled. That's fun. Been, been trying to think of different ways to change it up a little bit and might be the same old wallet. Yeah. I haven't seen anyone tool the insides of it. It's kind of no, you always. Two to three ounce. <laughs> That's probably why we don't see it too much. Yeah. But no, that looks good. Well, it was good. That's just kind of a card wallet, you know. If it had another pocket in it, that would even at two to three ounce, that would still make it pretty a pretty thick wallet. Mm -hmm. But the way you did it with yeah. just the cards, it's pretty nice. Oh, I like that one. So Facebook had an issue. I don't know. If people were having some issues with it, and then it ended up kicking our video off. So. Oh. Sorry, Facebook guys. Not that we can say sorry to them because because they're not here. But if you're on YouTube now from Facebook, <laughs> welcome or sorry, YouTube, YouTube Twitch. So Sheldon, do you do you live stream? Not sorry, Brandon. Sheldon. Anyways, <laughs> do, you, do you live stream on um, TikTok or do you just post videos? Uh, yeah, I do. A a lot of, uh, I've been mostly doing them on Instagram here lately. I've been trying to get my following to come over to Instagram more so gotcha. than TikTok. Um, TikTok's been having a bunch of technical issues and videos aren't getting viewed anymore and yada, yada, yada. So I've been trying to get people more so come to, uh, to Instagram. Instagram versus the TikTok. But. Good old social media politics. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Did we drop all of his follows where we can follow him at um i don't know yet uh brandon why don't you tell us where people can find you if they haven't already um i have a website as far as for custom orders the it's shelton dash tooling dash no shelton dash custom dash tooling.com i believe is it and of course uh the instagram um we have a facebook page i don't really do anything with it i actually can't stand Facebook. Um, of course, the TikTok, Shelton Custom Tooling as well. Gotcha. Basically, we're all on that. Anywhere you want to be.
No idea if anybody's talking because I can't hear anything. No. <laughs> We're just watching him draw. I'm not a real big talker, especially when trying to draw. <laughs> How about a shout out for uh, Mike Swain? Oh, yeah. So. You guys are really amazing out there, our YouTube followers or wherever it is that, that you know, you follow. Um, Mike Swain, one of our regulars in, in the Swain comments. Swain with the M. Swain? Uh -huh. Okay, sorry. Mike Swain. Um, you know, we've been talking about the store tour that um, we're going to try to do, and... I guess he used to do a lot of videography, and uh, yes, uh, Wednesday, I think it was, I think it was yes. a box just showed up for Tony over here to the video guy, which is pretty great, and um, he sent us his uh, three, what is it? Insta360. Insta360, so we could do our store tour with a nice, with a nice camera, just out of the blue. So, uh, super shout out to Mike. We really appreciate it. We are going to make a lot of fun videos with it. Um, you were awesome. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was unexpected, but really, really cool. So, we're gonna, Tony, Tony literally ran around the building here about like half an hour ago, just seeing, you know, what would happen and made a, a fun little video of him just walking through the store. So, um, thank you so much, and we're going to play with that and have a good time and hopefully have, you know, a lot of fun store tour -y videos that look really pristine. Man, that camera is good. Like, the quality on it is we were, like, walking around. It's really amazing. So, super shout out to you, Mike. Thanks so much. We're, we're going to have some fun with it. That's really nice. We have a lot of people that, that come into our store and watch us on uh, Instagram or or. Uh, Facebook or whatever, and uh, all of a sudden we get something from yeah. it, like the camera. I, I remember uh, several years ago, Ed Labar had come in. I had no idea who Ed Labar was, but pretty soon here came a, a mall in the mail for me. Nice. From Ed Labar, you know. And people do that, I, I don't know why, but we appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> some people, Some people like us. It's been kind of the same way with the whole TikTok thing. Like I said, that guy that was me, for, for Brandon and his wife. He also sent me like 15 or 20 different stamps. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, the, the social community is really pretty amazing with when it comes, I mean, and I'm sure, you know, every, my, you know, my husband makes knives, and so I'm also familiar, familiar with that kind of community, and we really just banded together as crafters in the world and, and uh, really are supporting each other, so it's, yeah. it's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, I'd say this is probably the most supportive um, community I've ever been any sort of part of. It's been really welcoming. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the nice part about it is you don't need to be a professional to be part of our community. No. You, know, you can be an amateur just like us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it from the bottom. Yeah. Everybody, you know, gets involved, and that's neat. Yeah. Well, and even even a lot of the super professionals are, are involved in doing yeah. stuff. So it's really amazing. That looks awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, I can't. I'm a little bitty bitty on my screen, so I don't know what all you can see. We can kind of see here and there, but no, that looks that looks really great. I like your swirls too. You've got good swirls. Yeah, good swirls. You some chicken necks on there, Danny. <laughs> yeah, you got him some chicken necks. Chicken necks go with the territory. I don't know how long we've been live now. I don't know how long y'all wanted to stay on or not. I was going to say, we've been here for, for about an hour, and I don't know, do we want to maybe pick this up next Friday and, and finish out the tooling next Friday? Maybe yep. make it a yeah, two-parter? We, we could do that. 
Yeah, we're at about 50 minutes. About 50 minutes. Okay, uh, before we go though, Tessa wants to know how much you'd charge for something like that. She's trying to figure out how much she should charge for something like that. Yeah, I think that's the biggest question. Um, no, like, uh, it mostly just depends on the design. Something um, obviously more full that's going to take me more time would be more expensive. That's probably going to be like $100 or more. Uh, but most of the time, they're usually around somewhere around 70 to 80 bucks. Nice. Hey, did, do you have a finished one? Were you... Do you, do you already have a finished one? I've got, got a few here. Okay. Look at those. Beautiful. Beautiful. We're actually doing an auction on that one right now on my website. I like that one. I like that one a lot. Nice. Yeah, it's going to be kind of hard to get rid of that one. I kind of want to wear it myself. <laughs> that was a custom order I just finished up. Very cool. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Very neat. So well, you, you guys that are watching and listening, you can do that too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, make it your own. Do something. Yeah. Do something your own. There's so many there's so many different niches out there with, you know, different design whatevers. So yeah, if anybody wants to do one of these hat rooms or whatever and you get it done, tag me in it. I'd love to see it. Awesome. All right. Well, anything else? Tony said to mention some follow. So go follow us. Follow Brandon if you don't already. Um, we will be here next week as always. So join us on Wednesday. We'll figure out what we're doing. I don't think we know yet. So we'll get something together. And then maybe, yeah, let's be back with you next Friday. How, that about, works. how about we make something... We can and make we'll something, do. and Denny can. Uh, we'll get Denny a hat, and he can get it cut out on Wednesday. And you guys can and get a pattern caught up and be kind of tool together. Yeah, that's that's yeah, what we'll cool. do. And tap we'll together. Both, we'll tool together. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of thing. tapping going on. <laughs> awesome. That'd be great. Okay. Well, we'll see you guys next week. You have a good weekend. Hey, Brandon, hang oh. on. And Brandon, hang on. Oh. We'll we'll talk to you as you get done. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye.